By road or rail, Wagga Wagga is about 320 miles from Sydney, about 60 less from Melbourne. But the flight from either city takes only an hour and a half. Looks big, even from up here, and plenty of space around it. They tell me it's the unofficial capital of the district, the biggest provincial centre in the state of New South Wales, and with all its primary and secondary industries getting bigger all the time. How do you find out about a place? The Tourist Bureau means a pile of pamphlets, but at least it's a start. Going by these, it seems there's not much they don't have. It's officially a city with a population of more than 23,000 and over 7,000 buildings. A modern theater seating 500, a dozen parks, public gardens, recreation and sports areas, plenty of clubs, two big hospitals, the usual churches, old style and new, high schools, a technical college, teachers college, and an agricultural college, its own television station, newspaper, and radio station. Ah, even a new gas works, a string of up-to-date factories, and lots of industry. Yes, all very nice, but I wonder what Wagga is really like. What makes it what it is? The people, of course. The people who live here, like me. Some of us were born here, and some have moved here. But it's us who make the town what it is. A town is a lot more than bricks and mortar. Every town has its own way of life, and it's the people who make it. Take a cross-section. Individuals who live and work in Wagga, each with his own reasons for being here. Neville Williams says he likes it because there's room for the kids, and because he's got a job he likes. He is a foreman at a clothing factory. Neville's pretty proud of his family. Got big plans for them. After work, or at the weekend, he often drops in on one of the clubs for a beer and a yarn with the boys. Sooner or later, he manages to bring the conversation around to his favourite hobby. He's a great talker, especially when he's keen about something. And he usually gets other people keen too. If it isn't boxing, it's acting. And here he has another circle of friends.
In the drama society, you find you can get to know all sorts of people you mightn't otherwise meet. Butcher, baker, stenographer, pharmacist, and nurse. At Wagga Wagga Base Hospital, she's Nurse Fitzsimons in her last year of training. Margaret wasn't born in Wagga. She moved here with her family a few years back. In the time she's been here, Margaret has got to know a lot of people, <coughs> which says a lot for her own personality. But something else for the friendliness of the townspeople themselves. She's a good nurse, she works hard and enjoys it. But when she's off duty, her life is just as busy. On Saturday night, Margaret usually goes dancing. Shepard and his wife are two of Margaret's friends. Brian is a reporter on the Wagga Daily Advertiser. Often he has to work on Sunday, but today he's free to work at home. Monday morning, and Brian is back at the newspaper office.
One way to see the life of a city is to follow a reporter on his rounds. Today, Brian is after three different stories. The sheep sales, the town's oldest inhabitant, and a ballet rehearsal at the Civic Theatre. Assignment number two, the old people's home. Last job for the day, the sales yard. No reporter misses an opportunity of getting a statement from an expert. Bob Brunskill is not only vice chairman of the sale yard, he's one of the district's leading farmers. When it comes to the rural side, his opinion counts. And incidentally, that's why Wagga is different from a lot of other cities. It's right in the middle of a rich farming district. Bob Brunskill and his neighbours do pretty well out of it too. There's a good reliable rainfall and the yield they get off their farms isn't bettered anywhere in the country.
dollars which have been earned on the board for next Saturday's competition to make sure they will be able to play on Sunday. Any bowler who is not sure about Sunday's play can get details from the game secretary. From the club to the TV station, a successful man is always a busy man. Come here for a moment, sir. Right here. Stand by, please. Radio audio, stand by. Good evening. This is Countryside, a program of information from the Department of Agriculture. Tonight's guest is Mr. Bob Brunskill, the vice chairman of the Wagga City Sale Yards. Last year, a record figure of one and a half million sheep passed through the sale yards in this city. Mr. Brunskill, to what do you attribute this record figure? I would say pasture improvement, which has been carried out in the Wagga district for the past six years, has built up the numbers of sheep carried within the district. Family life is the basis of a city, or a country for that matter. A town is a sort of family, made up of smaller families, and each family is made up of people, young, and old. Olive and Sel Rawlings didn't grow up here, but their children will. Sel is interested in the future of the city, not only for the sake of his own family, but also by profession. He's a town planner and he has the job of presenting to the council a scheme for the future development of Wagga and the surrounding district. It's a plan that provides for double the present population, which they expect by 1980. And it's been worked out on the principle of neighborhood units, each with their own shopping centers, schools, and so on. Elizabeth Rawlings will appreciate her father's planning one day, but at the moment she's more concerned with coping with the world as it is. The children have learnt in primary school that Wagga, in Aboriginal language, means crow. Wagga Wagga means two or more crows. For Dale Rawlings, school is a more serious affair. But even so, thoughts of the last outing of the church youth group are inclined to interfere. Coast, it would be on a beach. Here, it's on the banks of the Murrumbidgee River. A town is a family, and families are made up of individuals, but it's usually the mother who holds the group together. As Olive looks after the everyday needs of her family, helping it to grow and develop, she is, at the same time, helping her adopted city. Wagga Wagga, 
23,000 people and over 7,000 buildings. The statistics are true. But to understand them, to understand what gives this or any city its character, you've got to know the families and the people.